In this Guided Talks, Robert talks to Marcus Sheridan. Marcus is a highly sought-after international keynote speaker, known for his unique ability to excite, engage and motivate live audiences with his simple yet powerful transformational business approach. As author of the content marketing guidebook, They Ask You Answer, Marcus has not only inspired thousands to achieve their potential, but has given them the tools that they need to get there. Robert and Marcus discuss the backstory to You Ask You Answer, why should marketing agencies follow the system, why don't they, and who does it well, plus much more. Hello and welcome to Guide to Talks, Grow Your Digital Agency Talks, and I am absolutely delighted to have with me as my guest today, Marcus Sheridan. Now, Marcus wrote not one but two books that I keep throwing at people. I... This one, yeah, they ask you answer. I keep telling people, do it, do it, do it, do it. And as I was just saying to Marcus, people nod their heads, but they don't do it, especially agency folks. And the other book that I've got of his is The Visual Sale, which is, they kind of go together. Anyhow, welcome, Marcus. Robert, pleasure to be here. I think we're going to have a great uh, conversation today, and hopefully we'll say something valuable to your audience as well. Good. So let's, I mean, let's just go, let's just go straight in. For those who haven't read the book, could you just yeah. give us the quick, the quick backstory to how you ended up, you didn't start as a digital marketing agency person, how well, you ended up with They Ask You Answer? Well, I started a swimming pool company out of, uh, out of university with a couple of friends in 2001. And, uh, you know, we struggled to grow the business, but we were slowly growing it up until 2008 when the market crashed. And that was when I thought we were going to lose the business. And uh, we were in really bad shape. And it was during this time that I started to learn a lot more just about the Internet and also how I myself use the Internet, right? And started reading all these fancy phrases like inbound marketing, content marketing, all that stuff. And what I heard in my simple you know, pool guy mind was, you know, Marcus, if you just obsess over your customers' questions, you might save your business you just got to be willing to address those questions on your website through text and video. So I said, well, shoot, I can do that. So I started this philosophy at the time. We called it They Ask You Answer. It's four simple words. And we just said, hey, we're going to be the best teachers in the world when it comes to what we sold, which was fiberglass swimming pools. And to make a long story short, <clears throat> we went on to become the most trafficked swimming pool website in the world. And um, we got so much success from that that, I started to write about it, and as I wrote about it online on, on a personal blog, I started having these conferences say, hey, Marcus, can you share that, that uh, strategy and that story at our conference? And then I started having companies say, will you teach us how to do that? And that led to, to starting an agency and having a full-time speaking career. And today I still own the swimming pool company, but we went on to become the fastest-growing manufacturer of fiberglass pools in the U.S. as well. We have franchisees all over all over uh, North America, and it's been an amazing ride, but They Ask You Answer has become a movement, a framework for many companies, many businesses, thousands actually now around the world. Uh, the book has done extremely well. It's got two versions, and it just keeps on growing, and it's pretty cool. You, you feel, you know, it's, it's easy to launch a book <clears throat> and get sales for the first six months. It's hard to launch a book that gets sales after the first few years, and <clears throat> that's exactly what's happened because it works. The philosophy is is evergreen. It's not going to stop working. And that's why I'm always happy to talk about it. So have you got uh, evidence or hard numbers to, to kind of validate it works? Because, I mean, I, I talk a lot about the they ask, you answer, yeah. and people nod their heads sagely and they go, five questions, we'll come to that in the interview in a minute, and yeah. content and being teachers, and they, they nod their heads sagely. And then you look at their website six months later, and there it is, not a video inside, yeah, no all about them, doesn't approach. <laughs> so, so have you got evidence? Have you, have you got case studies, examples of agencies that you think do it really well? Well, you know, this is one of those things where, um, um, first of all, from a, from a business standpoint, we've got a ton of case studies. From an agency standpoint, you know, my uh, personal agency, Impact, which is uh, the URL is impactplus.com. We ha have done this with uh, you know, a ton of success. And I've not found an industry that's the exception 
to these principles because they're they're rooted in truth. And the you know the one of the issues though, Robert, is lots of times when we talk about does something work, we have to ask, well, what's the reference by which you're you're framing the question, right? Because if you're saying does it work from an SEO standpoint, that's one question. Does it work from a customer experience standpoint? That's a different question. Does it work from a website user experience standpoint or from a con higher conversion standpoint or from a shortening your sales cycle standpoint? Right? I mean, there's all these things that could, could dictate whether or not, quote, it works. But I can tell you uh, without equivocation that we, we have the data on way, way too many uh, companies. Now... If you said, I'm an inbound marketing agency, Marcus, I'm going to try to do they ask you answer for my agency. Is it going to be as successful as it was for your pool company? Well, probably not. And the reason why I say that is because we were in an industry where there was very little people thinking like this, yeah. right? There is, you know, in the book, I call it the Content Saturation Index, CSI. And there wasn't a lot of content in the swimming pool industry. Now, what's true, though, is if you go around Europe, still, when it comes to a lot of the, uh, the, the markets there, it's still pretty green when it comes to agencies really aggressively answering the questions their customers have. And they think that just because they have a blog, they're doing the Ask You Answer. And it's not the same thing. It's clearly not the same thing. I think, I mean, I think you're absolutely right. I think there's a... I think intuitively people get it, but intuitively it's kind of much easier to follow the pack. Most agencies look at all the other agencies. Oh, yeah, it says we... The, the, the websites are all identical. We have these people. We work really hard. That's, that, that's right. We are really interested. That's it. Uh, we deliver value for money. And then there'll be a picture of them either climbing a tree or pulling a rope. You know, it is so dull well, and well, it's boring. Ex it's extremely and... dull. You know, you know, one of the things that I love to tell uh, agencies, which they have a hard time with, is, and this is something that everybody listening to this right now, 99% of them haven't done. And that is, you should have a section that talks about who you're not a good fit for on your website. So in other words, all agencies, if they're being honest, would say, yep, we're not a good fit for either this type of customer or this type of service. Yet, how often do they definitively, clearly, distinctly state that on their website, in their messaging? And I, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense at all. It's no different than, you know, if you understand what they ask you answer is, it's really three things more than anything else. It's number one, the obsession with the questions, worries, fears, issues, concerns that buyers have, right? That's number one. An obsession, keyword, with the questions, worries, fears, issues, concerns, questions buyers have. Um, number two, it's the willingness to teach buyers, customers, in the way they want to be taught. In other words, you know, if they say, I want to see it on video, we can't say, well, video is not my thing. That's BS. It's what we tell our clients. We tell them to get over themselves, and agencies have to give over, yeah. get over themselves as well. And then finally, number three, are we willing to sell it the way buyers want to buy it? And this is a really interesting one, Robert, because we're evolving, especially post-COVID, in terms of how we want to buy stuff. And we're all getting used to almost like that SaaS model of being able to see it, understand what it comes with, understand what the call it monthly cost is up front, and then making a phone call, and then possibly engaging that particular company. You don't see that in the agency world. We're still not talking about prices in the agency world, which is utterly ridiculous. And, um, you know, someone should be ashamed if they're not discussing cost and price on their website. Because it just means they don't really care about the questions their buyers are asking, and they're just gonna they're gonna refuse to uh, to address it, and they're gonna ignore it, and they're gonna wait until they ask. That is so prehistoric think thinking. 